Hi. Hi. How's it going? I, I'm pretty good. I got to tell you, when I was when I was telling you that story, or to telling the, the audience that story, I could see you kind of like shake your head like you still couldn't really <laughs> believe that any of this is happening, right? Pretty much, yeah. It was such a whirlwind of a time and as has been my career um, so far that I just can't believe this opportunity happened and I'm so honored and proud. I, it's, it's amazing. So can you do me a, a challenging favor? Yeah. This is a radio show. I love your enthusiasm, by the way. <laughs> Um, can you describe the dress you made for Lainey? Yeah. Um, so I describe kind of the color as a rosé ombre effect. It's a pleated material, um, a high detail on the shoulders, kind of a cape um, with, with a, a cape attachment. Um, and we made a floor length version for Lainey for the Golden Globes. I'll say if you want to see a picture of it, it's on our on our website, cbc.ca slash Q, also on our on our Twitter at CBC Radio Q. But I hear it all happened because you were on her show, right? Yes. Um, so I was featured on the social uh a few a few months ago uh, for the cashmere bathroom tissue um, white cashmere collection um, and I met Lainey and I was just so excited to, to meet her she's been an icon of mine for for a number of years um, and I just kind of reached out shot in the dark and said if you ever need a dress for anything let me know um, and then her stylist reached out to me a, a, f- a few um, months after and then it just kind of <laughs> went from there so where were you were you on the couch like I said eating chips and pajama pants when the when the word got out that your dress had gone viral I was yeah actually eating some chocolate with my friends on the couch <laughs> <laughs> watching a hockey game which I don't normally even watch hockey but uh yeah it was very very much a, a spiral Right. And it was incredible. What were you getting? Like, what kind of texts were you getting? Um, just a lot of tags uh, on Instagram, uh, first from Lainey, and then people seeing that she was in my gown. Um, and then it kind of really took off within the indigenous community um, mm-hmm. on Instagram and Twitter. And that's kind of when I really knew that it was affecting more people in a, in a really positive way than what I initially thought when I was just dressing a celebrity. It's, 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 it's such a big story. I'm so excited to talk to you. But I kind of want to talk to you because I feel like from the start, you've been really committed to inclusivity in your fashion you know you've been using models with different body shapes and gender identities models with alopecia um, which is a condition that is uh, causes hair loss models with prosthetics you know how did this inclusivity become such a big part of who you are as a designer yeah so uh, I call myself a third culture kid um, because yes I am indigenous and Canadian but I didn't grow up uh, within Canada I grew up internationally um, because of my dad's job um, what did your dad do? He's in the mining industry, right. um, in the, and we do the construction phases of mining projects. Right, uh, so that's why he spends so much time in Newfoundland. Exactly. Right. So uh, nickel in Newfoundland, diamonds in Northwest Territories, mm-hmm. um, and then I spent some time in Australia, New Caledonia, Indonesia, um, and England. So during my time in Australia, I felt uh, kind of like the odd person out. I was the only North American uh, student uh, at the school that I attended, and it was very kind of an outback uh, country uh, mentality uh, school. So I felt very segregated, sort of. Um, and then transitioning to an international school in England, uh, we were all the odd people out. Um, and we felt included within that community because we were the odd people out. Um, so I think it was just a natural transition, uh, being interested in fashion and going um, into this a uh, very stereotypical fashion industry. I wanted everyone who didn't feel included to feel included in my clothing on on my runway. What well, what got you started in fashion? Uh, I was always interested in fashion. Um, a lot I did after school school programs, uh, learning how to sew, um, and then I uh, during my undergrad um, at the University of Toronto, I would be putting together wearable sculpture. Um, in, in my art classes, and then it just kind of progressed from there. If you're just tuning in, uh, I'm Tom Power. I'm speaking with Leslie Hampton, the fashion designer whose design made waves at the Golden Globes red carpet on eTalk. Host Lainey Louis, if you want to see it for yourself, head on over to our Instagram or to our Twitter. And Leslie, this is the first time that I think this has happened. I think we've had a, a, a model with a dress on on the show before, maybe on our show in, in Nunavut with Victoria, but uh, this is the first time we've had a bust with a dress on. So again, we're going to try to do something challenging for the radio, even though Andrew is here filming it. Uh, what, what are we looking at right here? Yeah, so this is a dress uh, gown from our 1876 collection. Um, and it's a piece, uh, asymmetrical cut, um, made with uh, red polka dot material um, on mesh. So embroidered dots on mesh. 
Um, and from our 1876 collection, the collection was all inspired around me discovering my indigeneity and what that means in the Canadian landscape, especially in 2019, 2020, in this current time, uh, what it means to be an Indigenous person, especially an Indigenous person who uh, has more of a public uh, view um, and public um, display. So figuring out my indigeneity, this piece is a comment on uh, the missing and murdered indigenous women and celebrating um, those, the spirits of those people that we have lost. Well, um, I, I have to say, like, I'm, 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 when, you, when you brought it in first, so you brought it in kind of before you sat down to chat and I looked at it and, you know, you say it's inspired by missing and murdered indigenous women. There's something so affecting about it. It's it's sort of flecked, flecked with these small kind of blood red dots everywhere. Yeah. And I didn't want to say the word beautiful to you. Mm. Like I didn't want to say the word, I was trying not to say the word stunning or beautiful or gorgeous. Like it was, it was hit me in a, in a, in a different way. Mm -hmm. do, you, do, do you know what I mean by that? Yeah. So I chose this material specifically because I wanted each dot to, to represent kind of the vast number of the missing and murdered indigenous women, girls, and two-spirited individuals um, that have been lost or taken. Um, and really kind of putting that at the forefront of fashion shows how you can communicate uh, that kind of heavy topic within a beautiful piece um, and really kind of put it at the forefront of a conversation such as this. I'm, I'm interested in talking a little bit more about like how we can tell stories through fashion. So I spoke to uh, Andre Leon Talley, who's one of the folks behind Vogue. Do you know, do you know mm -hmm. Andre Leon Talley? A little bit on the show. And he said something that I thought was pertinent for our conversation. Take a listen to this. She created narratives. She just didn't say, describe clothes. She created stories behind each dress. She would give you a picture, a mental word picture. So that's him talking about Diana Vreeland, who is his editor-in-chief at, at Vogue, and he's talking about how clothes can and tell stories. Mm -hmm. This is not something that I was necessarily aware of. When did you realize that clothes can be more than just, I mean, something to wear, something to design, but something that can also tell a story? Um, starting uh, pretty much from the beginning, um, connecting uh, the, the artisticness of fashion and the application of putting it on a body and what that conversation is. Um, and that relationship, that's kind of how it all began. So every collection of mine does have an, a, a topic that I want to discuss that's something happened personally or uh, to someone in my life uh, and very relevant to me as, as a 25-year-old growing up and trying to figure out who I am and, and what I want to say to the world. Yeah, I mean, the, the, you mentioned that a couple of times, trying to figure out who I am. Mm -hmm. And, and um, when you were talking about the, this piece in the 1876 collection, mm -hmm. you said to me, and th th this is too personal to just let me know, but you said um, it was about me trying to discover my own indigeneity. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me more about that? Yeah, um, so my mom was adopted, so I didn't grow up uh, within my indigenous culture. And then um, growing up internationally because of my dad's job, uh, I didn't really figure, didn't really understand what it meant to be indigenous. Um, and living in Australia, being an indig indigenous person in that country is very different mm -hmm. than being an indigenous person within Canada. And uh, I've, from when I can last remember, I've always had my Indian status card, but I never really knew what that meant um, and why I had this specific number attached to my name and why the government needed to know that. So specifically with this 1876 collection, I really wanted to discover what the Indian Act was about and why it applies to me as an individual and how it applies to my community as a whole. What was that like for you? What, like, what, what did you feel when you were doing these designs and when you were done? Um, I, it was very empowering. I would say, um, to understand how people view me and how I can change that perception of how people view either me or uh, my community. And doing that through fashion is, is very exciting to, to push, push the gatekeeping forward. I, I want to talk a little bit more about how you did that. So um, Dior, the fashion company Dior, released a perfume called Sauvage mm -hmm. uh, back in the summer. And the ad for it had some problematic imagery. Uh, a dancer in a headdress, Johnny Depp, appeared in the campaign. Dior was called out for being insensitive, called out for being tone deaf, and you were interviewed by CBC News about it. Mm -hmm. um, here's what you said. If we're representing Indigenous people as savage, then what are you telling your kids? What are you telling anyone about how you think of these people, even though you're inspired by Indigenous culture, but then you're slapping them in the face, pretty much. That's uh, my guest, Leslie Hampton. Um, she's a, a fashion designer. She joins me in studio right now. So can you tell me what happened after that? Yeah, um, so 
I pretty much just stated uh, it reinforced old stereotypes and we want to think of Indigenous people within the 2020 world. Um, so it really needs to be something that people need to understand that we're re real people, we're city dwellers, and yes, we have our indigeneity, but it's not what you see in the movies from the from the 1950s, 1970s. Um, so after I, I had my few comments on CBC The National, I received a number of emails from a specific individual who kind of wanted me to, wanted to put me in my place and <clears throat> say that uh, I was wrong in, in my views of, of how I thought I how this um, ad represented my, my people. Right. Um, and they pretty much said it's, you're, you're killing the Indians um, in this ad um, after they re-edited it and took the, the Indian, uh, took the indigenous uh, inspiration and imagery out of it. Um, it was pretty much my fault that they killed off the oh. Indians, quote unquote. Oh my God. Um, so that was one of the first times I, had someone attack my indigeneity, the in, indigeneity that intensely, yeah. um, and it's something that I'm going to be working through those emotions and things like that um, with my next collection. Yes, yeah, so th this is what's interesting to me is that you, you know, I, I think it was like a mentor of yours, mm -hmm. right, said to you that if you're going to have this experience and such a terrible experience, you should you should channel it into your work, right? Yeah. So um, these emails happened uh, the day after the interview, a month after the interview, and then a month after that. So I've had contact from this person a number of times and uh, the first few times I had it bottled up inside me and didn't really know how to share it with anyone and then once the third uh, email from this aggressive individual happened uh, I, I needed to share it with someone so I um, one of my mentors Serene Fox um, who is an indigenous activist uh, artist and dancer um, who is in uh, she's featured on future history on aptn and um, is very much in in the in the spotlight um, so I, I I shared these emails with her and I asked her you know how do how do you overcome something like this how do you move forward because it's it it, it hurts yeah um, and she said pretty much you share the story as much as you can and you share it with your community and, and let everyone know that this is happening and through sharing, that's where the healing will come in. Well, it's, it's, it's really incredible work you're doing here. I, I, I'm so blown away by the storytelling you're able to do with your work. And um, thanks for talking to me. How about this, this Golden Globe thing, though? This is madness. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was definitely, definitely kind of exploded <laughs> and picked up incredibly. Um, I honestly didn't think when I signed on to making the dress that it was going to take off this much, but I'm so happy I can make such an impact uh, within the Indigenous community and show what authentic Indigenous representation and what Indigenous fashion is in this moment, and you're, in and this you're time. Tw 20, 25. 25. 25. Where do you want to go from here? Like, <laughs> do you have someone you want to, uh, do you have someone you're dying to dress? Uh, I would love to dress Ashley Graham. Um, Meghan Markle's coming back into the country, so I'd love to dress her as well. I assume because <laughs> Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are moving back, I assume they're listening to CBC all the time. Exactly. So, so, so hit me up. <laughs> I don't like the laughter that came from some of the people in the studio there. Leslie, I don't know about that. Hey, so nice to meet you. You too. Thank you so much for bringing, bringing your incredible designs in, and, and thanks for making the time to talk. Thank you for, thank you for listening.